Hello there, my name is Florian, and in this video I'd like to invite you to do some regression testing for the F-Sharp compiler. As part of my freelance consultant activities, I contribute to open source projects, targeting very specific needs of my customers. One of the projects I've recently contributed to is the F-Sharp compiler itself. The compiler is a very large project and has an extensive suite of unit tests and integration tests. At the time of recording, a pull request needs 17 different CI builds in order to get approved. However, every PR can potentially introduce a regression. Today, I'd like to show you how you can test a local build of the compiler against your own code, to verify that the code that builds today will still build with the next compiler release. I'll be demonstrating today's experiment inside a cloud workspace on Gitpod. This is basically a Linux Docker container that I can access in the browser. I chose Linux to illustrate that this is all cross-platform, and I've opened the Phantomus repository, as I'm quite familiar with that one. I'm going to build things locally just before we get started by running a .NET build from the CLI. As you can see, this builds as expected. Next, I'm going to clone the F-Sharp compiler. So let me go one folder up, do a git clone of the .NET F-Sharp. And I can go to the F -sharp repository and execute the build script. On Unix, that would be the build.sh. And if we run this with the dash dash help, you can see there are a couple of options I can pass here. But for now, we're just interested in the regular builds. So let's just run exactly that. Hey there, this is Florian from the future. I'm going to say a lot of FCS in the next couple of minutes, but actually I always meant FSC. Uh, we're talking about the compiler today, not the f -sharp compiler service, the actual FSC compiler. Great, now this created a bunch of files in the artifacts folder. Let's now try and go and see if we can find the, um, the FCS project. So let's go to artifacts. We go to bin, see what's in there. So there's a lot of stuff in here, but what we're interested in is the FCS. This is the compiler itself. And what you can see here is this FCS DLL. That's actually the thing that's being used by MS builds to compile your code. So if we We'll grab the folder uh, where the FCS DLL is in. We can use this to build our own code, but target to use the FCS DLL. Uh, so to use the compiler that we just compiled ourselves. So let's open a new uh, window. We're back in our Phantomus code base. And if we now do a .NET build, we can actually say, hey, I'm going to add an MS build property this property is called .NET FCS compiler path. And if we set this to be our workspace in an FCS DLL, just to get a bit of an idea, let's uh, put the verbosity level on normal. And if we now do a build, we'll be using our locally compiled f -sharp compiler and we'll try and figure out if our code still compiles. So this um, all compiled, but I'm assuming everything was still built up front. So just be really sure, I'll do a .NET uh, fake build minus the clean. This is a little clean script that we have. It removes the object folder and the bin folder. And let's just run this again. You can see it's doing a lot more now and it's all of a sudden it crashes. Yikes, it did really blow up here. Um, what we can see here is that the um, F sharp compiler, so in the core compiled target, you can see over here, it is going to call the um, .NET 7 FCS DLL over here, and it's going to use that. But there's a bit of a problem, and we can see the problem better if we go and enter our .NET version. You can see that we're using the .NET 6 SDK, but our compiler is .NET 7, so that's bound to be a recipe for disaster. 
Now, let's see if we have any other installed SDKs. We can do this with .NET list SDKs. And unfortunately, we only have one um, .NET SDK. So how on earth did we then build a .NET 7 f -sharp compiler? Well, during that build a chess script, the f -sharp compiler actually pulled down a preview of .NET 7 in order to uh, use that to build itself. So luckily, we can actually just access that and when we try and run our .NET build again, instead of pointing to the .NET that will be picking up our um, .NET 6 SDK, what we can do here is if we go up to the F# -sharp folder, F# -sharp will download the SDK in .NET, and there is a .NET executable file as well. So this is the same .NET um, entry point, but this time for the downloaded .NET 7 SDK. And if we run a build there and pass in the um, compiled, the sorry, the local F# -sharp compiler. we'll see that our core compile is still going to do exactly what we expect it to do. So it still calls .NET, then just the compiler DLL, and then we'll be passing in all the options that it was built, provided it. And afterwards, we notice everything still builds. In case this didn't work, or the compiler itself somehow um, wasn't able to produce the uh, .NET binary, then it really means that there was probably a regression over in the f -sharp compiler. Please try and isolate what your code does at the point that uh, things go wrong and try and report it over to .NET f -sharp. If you can say, hey, I compiled using this commit, the problem starts occurring there, this is a sample to reproduce it, then the f -sharp team will be having a lot more luck to pinpoint which exact pull request and cause the problem and the good thing there is that it's already being detected way before the .NET SDK release. It can still potentially be uh, fixed and the bug could never be shipped. I really implore you to try this technique out on a regular basis, be it weekly, be it every fortnight. Just sync your local f -sharp compiler, build it and just build your own project. If you found a problem, it can potentially be fixed before it ever gets released. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching.